Hey everyone, and welcome to Unsubscribed Healthcare's latest update. Um, so this is an update to show you guys the um, new add-on that I've added. So if you purchase my soap note or if you purchase the uh, template package that will be coming out soon for physical therapists, um, if you do that and you want to include this add-on, uh, you can. Um, but this is what the add-on does. I'm really excited about this. When you come up here and you click on unsub healthcare, you can go to patient intake. Now, if you have someone call you while you're working on documentation, guess what? You can do a patient intake right now. So if we do Charles Norris, okay? And you can put in their phone number, email, everything. All of the stuff that's on this intake form is what fills into the CMS 1500. I have also been able to figure out and format the CMS uh, 1500 so that it fills out properly for you. Um, so it makes it really easy to print out on that CMS 1500 form. Um, this I need uh, in order for my programming that I've written to work. I need to have unique uh, identifiers for each patient. So the way that I've been doing that is by doing the first initial, last initial, the month and the day of the uh, intake. Click submit. All right, you'll see intake form has been submitted. Now, what that has done is that I can go over to my Google Drive and you can see that Charles Norris, right, has been added into my patient's folder. Um, so it makes it real easy. Uh, they, you know, keeps it nice and clean. You don't have to worry about making a new folder every time and spending the time doing that. So on the form submission, um, a new folder will be created. So even if they fill it out on your website, uh, a new patient folder will be created. It doesn't just have to be in this area. Um, if we come over here, I made mine. Uh, this is all fake information and stuff, uh, but just uh, for an example for you guys. But if I did save current sheet as PDF, you can see the script is running. This will all subtract. That's how you know it's working. And then as we come down here, you can see it all expand at the very bottom again. A pop-up in the bottom right says that it uh, has been saved to the folder Mac Shippen. So let's check out Mac Shippen. And there you go. You can see it comes up with the time and date of when it was uh, saved as a PDF. So again, that makes it really handy uh, because now that PDF is, you know, you, it's a, it was a PDF so you can't edit it. Um, all right. So just like before, uh, this also has the super bill. If you don't want to use the super bill and you just want to come over to the CMS 1500, you can. In column A, all of these letters or all these numbers line up with the boxes in the CMS 1500. So if you need to uh, know what you're looking at and you have a CMS 1500 form, you can see exactly which areas these will all fill out when you answer them. So when we're looking at this, you can say mark insurance as any of these and it will do it for you. Um, you can change the insurance ID here if you needed to. All this stuff you can edit right here as needed. Um, but column B tells you what it's looking for. Column C is where you're going to be your answers. Column D and E is where I do some fun calculations to get it to be formatted correctly because the CMS 1500 wants everything in Courier New, size 12 font, all capitals, and it, they're picky about you know the commas and everything else. So I went ahead and I read through all of the NUCC on what it needs to be formatted. Um, so I've made it so that it formats correctly onto the CMS 1500 for you. If you're unsure what num uh, num box four is, I've also included notes from the CMS, uh, from the NUCC website uh, and their guide and tells you what the instructions are uh, and how it should be filled out. So if you need to double check and make sure that that is filled in correctly, you can do that, okay? If you guys watch my other video, you can uh, see how you can have a digital signature after the first visit and how you can get the patient to sign it right there. If you are uncomfortable with that, you can put no signature on file, right? Um, but their boxes 
to double click if you want to add in the patient date of when they signed it, you know, you would add it there. Um, but I make all this really easy. Um, here you can see that we didn't add any eval uh, diagnosis codes, right? So if we go back to the eval, let's add in the first six just to make it easy. This is the upper extremity, so I've pre-populated upper extremity diagnosis codes into it. No, this isn't the first six, but so you can see um, diagnosis codes are added into it. The doctor is automatically brought up. The NPI is automatically brought up if he is in your doctor database. If he is not, you click on add physician and you will see now this box comes up with the title of the provider, um, their name, NPI. You can add their phone number, fax, and company uh, just so it's easier for you to refer reference back to. Um, and I'll show you guys the data center in the next video. But if we come back here, now you can see all of these numbers are added. Um, and again, it automatically formats everything for you so it's in the appropriate format. What you'll want to do is that when you're actually going to add the CPT code, so for box 24, you want to click at the very top that minus because now all of these are going to be lined up in one column. If you have it open, you can see that because all of these things are like spaced out and they take up multiple, you know, they expand on the rows um, and make them wider or smaller. It makes it a lot more difficult to read, I find, over here. So if you just click the, you know, collapse group on the very top, now it's much easier to read here. So also with the CMS, I went ahead and I made it so that if you wanted to, you can make it so all of the modifiers carry forward, all of the dates carry forward, all of the uh, providers carry forward right so you can do all that if you wanted to um, you know uh, and so I made it so it automatically updates on other things too so like it will add your state license or MPI based off of whether it's the OB2 state license uh, if you get rid of that then it automatically defaults to the NPI um, you know but if you do this click yes uh, so the it only shows items below it uh, uh, when you have the CBT code added. So if I come here and do therapeutic exercise, you can now see all the stuff that I had clicked on yes will add forward onto the next columns. Um, I've also made it so that it automatically calculates all of the, uh, you know, money values for you. So your charges are $200. Uh, you would add, you know, how many ever units you want to do. Um, and it will all tally it for you on the CMS. So let's see what the actual CMS 1500 looks like. Right, so if you come here, this is the CMS 1500. Also, if you use the menu up here and you do insurance company info and you put it in, it will look for what the top, uh, what the patient's insurance is and it will put it at the top. So when you fold the CMS 1500 and you put it in a, uh, a letter, it will have all of it printed in to the correct area and that way you can just fold it up and mail it out. Uh, again, you can see all the patient information has been populated. I've left notes here so that you guys can see what boxes it is. Um, again, coming down here, this is you know where all of your charges are. You can also add in stuff here if you forgot it from the other one. Um, just once you do change it, it won't work going forward. So I would always recommend coming to the CMS input sheet and changing it here just so that you're consistent. Worst case scenario, you can always make a duplicate copy. Um, but one of the cool things I also did was that here is where the fake company's address is. Here's where the uh, patient's fake address is. If you came up here and you said, you know, all of these treatments were at the office, you come here and you can see it's dynamically updated and dynamically changed. So that's pretty much the biggest update for this. Um, again, you can copy and name current sheets. So if you wanted to copy the CMS, um, none, th that's one of the problems with that. I'd have to figure out how to do that uh, to remove all the format, uh, but keep the values because if pretty sure if you just copy this, it's going to update anytime you do the CMS input. So what I would always do is click Save CMS as PDF, right? So if you click on that, you 
can see the export has been successful. I had to do it a different way than the save current sheet because it didn't allow me to format to remove notes or to expand the walls. So I had to figure out a different way to uh, write the code, but you can do that when you click on it. It shows you how it will print out and shows you the PDF that was created. You can see in the top left here, I made it so it automatically again updates or saves with the patient's name what it is, the CMS 1500, and the time that it was saved. Um, but you can see this should print exactly onto your CMS 1500 forms. And then if we go back to my Google Drive, refresh. All right, I'll have to find out where it saved to um, and fix that. But that's the intent is that it saves there. Um, but you can see that it automatically formats it so that it will be the correct uh, height and everything. Um, but again, uh, you get the treatment note. Um, everything is carried forward, so whatever you do. Um, but yeah, uh, it's getting closer to being a fully functional uh, EMR and documentation system. And it's, you know, again, fully based off of just Google Sheets and some simple script that I've written and just formatting all every cell um, but yeah if you like this uh, you know comment below if you want to join our Facebook group as well and keep up the discussion on how to reduce your monthly cost as a healthcare business owner uh, we'd love to have you um, but yeah search for unsubscribed healthcare on Facebook and you can find us there otherwise you know feel free to ask me any questions and I'd love to help you out all right remember unsubscribe <laughs>